On the night of January 14th, a driver crossing the Hailbogs Bridge veers into four men working on the road. Three were left with minor injuries. But the fourth, Brady Ortigo, was thrown from the bridge, falling more than 150 feet into the river. His body is still missing. So when did it start to sink in that Brady would not be coming home? Probably, you know, within probably 72 hours after when I really had time to digest it. When I realized that I wasn't gonna hear his voice anymore. And it wasn't just an extended period of time of him being away at work. Um, is when it really set in that it's, this is real, that this is our new reality. 44-year-old Brady Ortigo, devoted husband and stepfather, proud of his Cajun upbringing, has never been named publicly until now. Just an all-around, genuine, sweet, loving man. His widow, Adele Domang Ortigo, said she is breaking her silence in an attempt to end another painful silence, the one surrounding the state police investigation of her husband's death. I don't feel like we're getting the proper answers. I don't feel like we're getting justice. I feel like I'm just getting told whatever I need to be told to just keep holding on. The investigation is being handled by Troop B of the state police. It seems they have plenty of evidence to work with. The driver left the accident on foot, abandoning his mangled truck, making the fatal accident a hit and run and possibly a negligent homicide. According to multiple accounts, the driver was injured and was picked up by someone near the scene. Sources say he was treated at St. Charles Parish Hospital. There also were eyewitness reports of a passenger who did remain at the scene. I feel like at this point they're dragging, they're just dragging, they're dragging it on. Channel 4 also learned through multiple sources that several people provided state police investigators with the name of the alleged driver. It's the talking town. People are talking about it and hair salons and barbershops. I spoke to one person with knowledge of those tips. I know of at least few different people who have called in directly to state police and given tips with the name of the driver. Roughly how soon after the accident did people communicate with the state police? I know the first tip was within the uh, first five or six days. We followed up on that information, including the address of the alleged driver. And here's what we found, a wrecked pickup truck sitting in plain sight in front of the house. If you can find the rightful owner to return the vehicle, then you can find the rightful owner to have a conversation with. Directly after the accident, state police said they believe they know who the driver is and they hope to have that person in custody, quote, sooner rather than later. But about three weeks later, on February 4th, Troop B spokesman Monroe Dillon responded to our questions with the following statement. State Police Crime Lab is also currently processing collected evidence, which will help confirm the validity of the sequence of events from the night in question, as well as who is actually responsible for the crash. Dillon went on to write, Troopers have received information from various sources, and a lot of information has not been vetted as being fact. I'm left with so many un unanswered questions from Troop B that I don't, I don't know where to turn any longer. Brady's body still has not been recovered. Plans for a funeral are on hold. Adding to the family's grief, the driver responsible is, so far, not being held accountable. Nor are those who helped him leave the scene. To know that there's an individual out there that is responsible for this, that has not yet taken the responsibility, that hasn't come forward, is hard. Uh, you know, we're the ones left here to suffer and to hurt and to mourn and to try and figure out how to get closure. But I don't, I don't know how to do that right now. Until an arrest is made, Ortigo says closure seems impossible. Mike Pearlstein, Eyewitness News.